Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Molly Gothic. Uh, it is evening, but an intro is needed, and so an intro will be recorded. Uh, this is part two to something that probably didn't seem like it was going to have a part two, and that is bleach painting a denim jacket. Uh, that ended up being a super quick, really easy project, and this one decided it was going to be everything that one wasn't. Uh, very long, very time consuming, very detailed, but at the same time, I'm so obsessed with how it came out. So if you haven't seen how I made the base of this jacket, you can go ahead and maybe I'll remember to link it up there or just look for bleach painting denim on my channel. Uh, I will warn you, this video is very rambly. It's very long, it's very convoluted because basically it was just my thought process put into film. And there's a few reasons why. Uh, one is the patterns and stuff you'll see in this and I'll explain that in a second again are not my own, I was using a book, so there isn't as much tutorial or step-by-step -step to teach because I don't want to be essentially stealing these patterns, but I'll show the book and everything that I used. Um, you'll see all the different pieces and how it slowly comes to life. So this is more of a showing you my chaotic train of thought and less of bringing you along step-by-step -step and explaining how I did everything. It's more of showing you um, how I thought about it. So is this a journal entry? Is this a therapy video? I don't know, but I'm really, really proud of this final project. So um, I really hope you stick it around to the end to see it because like, I, I'm i so proud of this. This is one of my favorite things I've made recently. And it's just kind of emphasized that feeling of like, when you create something, no one else has this. No one else has anything like this. I mean, and I'll show it. This is, I have the final product literally sitting in front of me. So there's the bleach paint denim and I'm going to be showing you how I added these embellishments. So genuinely, this is one of my favorite projects that I've done recently and I'm really excited to share it with you. So please stick around to the end. Um, I know it's going to be a long rambly one, but hey, that's just what I got for you this week. So if you made it this far, you might as well give it a like since there's only more rambles to come and uh, let's get to the project. So. Where do I start with this video? So um, I've already done an intro at this point. So I have had the idea that I wanted to embroider that jacket, the skull rib cage one I did, but embroidery is hard. So my debate was I wanted to do traditional embroidery originally. Uh, I have a video where I did embroidery and it didn't go terribly and I do want to continue trying embroidery because I think it's really fun and you can do a lot with it. However, I'm not good at it and I love the way the bleach paint came out and I really didn't want to screw it up. But you know what I am good at? Crochet. I was actually at Joann's buying fabric for my last video, the Baphomet plushie, which if you haven't seen is absolutely adorable and you should go check it out. But I walked past this book and I saw flat flowers, which may not mean anything to anybody else, but I mean, essentially I was either gonna be embroidering flowers, which would be flat, or I could crochet flat flowers and sew them on. So I decided that I was gonna do that. And so all the tabs up here are all the different flower patterns that I really wanna try, and there's one down here. Um, so this book, it's not set up necessarily conducively, which is a little annoying. The patterns for the flowers are based on these preset collages. So you just kind of have to go through and pick which collage. The nice thing is the collages are color coded in the tab. So you just got to go to the next color and you'll be at the next collage. So I just flipped through the collages and marked which pieces from. So obviously I liked this one and this one from the collage and kind of went through. A note if you buy this book, I'm pretty sure this is in UK stitch terms based on the stitch diagrams and what it says. So Domino is taking a drink of water if you can hear him in the background. So when it says double crochet, it actually means a single crochet and stuff like that. Um, the poppy is definitely one that I loved. You can see that I did my poppy right there and there's the base of it. So it took me a little bit to understand what these patterns were saying. So I will not be actually going through any of the patterns for how I put these flowers together because they aren't my own. Um, I got them entirely from this book. If I come up with any of them, and I don't think I will, uh, then I will include it. Um, but just a heads up, crocheting with embroidery floss takes a lot of thread and also very small hooks. So the hook I have been using is actually, I think this one, 
which is a 1.65 millimeter. The book says in the very beginning, it actually goes over a bunch of different hooks that you can use and it's very pretty picture. So there's this nice little diagram here and it's like two and a half for embroidery thread. Well, Michael sold a three pack of these like really tiny hooks that I've just lost one of. And the, the smallest, the biggest one in it was 2.75, which like, so I tried this and that's how I got some like kind of big and loose and I didn't really like it. So I did actually just purchase a 2.25, which is smaller than 2.5, but I found that this, I think, oh, there's a 1.3. The other one was a 1.65. I'm doing great at keeping track of my materials. Here we go, 1.3, I haven't used it. But the 1.65 is the one I have been using, especially for stuff like the stems. And it makes a really nice, fine texture. However, it's also like just too small and really difficult to work with. So my hope is this 2.25 is slightly smaller than this one, but just enough bigger than this one that it'll be the right hook and the one that I wanna use. I actually haven't used this one yet. Um, but yeah, these hooks are really freaking tiny. My camera doesn't even wanna focus on them. So I can only do so many of these at a time, but I've done a few and obviously they either need to be blocked or like stitched down because they're not looking the best right now. But I've just kind of been experimenting with it and different colors. So here's kind of the muted tone. So obviously I have a bunch for the poppies. I didn't get a chance to buy more blue, but like when I tell you it uses a lot, the red you see here in, one, in these two poppies is the equivalent of one of these. So for every two poppies I want, I need one of these. And I don't know how many poppies I want, so I bought four more. Originally, I just started with one of all of them. Um, these, I'm gonna have a really hard time color matching. These are actually from, my parents and I went to a Van Gogh exhibit and they had this really cool Starry Night embroidery set. So they got it for me and I'm reusing the yarn, not the yarn, the thread. So that means I don't know what color these are because typically when you go to match embroidery thread, there's these little color numbers on them. Um, and you do this because there's so many shades that are so close together. You really have to have the number to make sure you get the exact same one. Um, this is a new color that I'm thinking of introducing because while I love the pale green that I have, I'm just concerned that it's going to get a little lost. Like, I think this blue would benefit from a slightly darker green. And I tried a, gr a different green, but this green was too vibrant. And so I don't like this green. I don't like this green, but I love this one. So we're doing a lot of color theory. Like there's a lot of other skeins, skeins, whatever, tomato, tomato, um, of different colors. I'd even tried some purples and I'm not sure which ones I'm liking. These brown ones are left over from like some friendship bracelet kit I got forever ago. So hope I don't ever need more of those, uh, which I think are nice for this. So I have a variety of colors here, but these are gonna be other stem colors. I bought a few more yellow to be like the center of this. I don't think I'm gonna do too much with that. This is my favorite leaf pattern. Oh my God, I think these leaves look so good. So I definitely wanted a lot of those. So I bought plenty of the green to do that. And then the last color I kind of bought was this really pale silver. Cause I think this against this color, you know that like super classic, I don't know what it's called, but it's in bouquets. I literally have a bouquet sitting next to me because Valentine's day just happened. Let's see if I can extract it. These guys. I basically kind of want to make these flowers, but with this yarn, I keep calling it yarn, but kind of like with these two to do these little spider webs. So there's a lot of plans and a lot of ideas going on. Um, so what the rest of this video is going to be, I'm not entirely sure. I will see if I bring you along in the process of how I make these or not. If I come up with my own pattern, I totally will. Otherwise, um, we're probably just going to get to them. Wow, English. Uh, we're probably just going to go to, there's still fuzzies from the Baphomet plushie. Do you know how many times I vacuumed or cleaned this area and I'm still finding them? Anyways, don't do that, kids. Don't don't cut up a teddy bear. It will haunt you for the rest of your days uh, in fuzz. So I'm not entirely sure what the rest of this video is going to be. So we're either about to cut to a fast montage of me crocheting these, or I'm going to hate doing that. And we're just going to have a bunch of them done and be ready to piece them on. I'm kind of doing this how I did the motif for my sweater where I'm just planning a bunch of them and then going to see what I end up using. So I'm probably going to have leftovers or extras of some of these pieces, but that's okay. And I'll figure out what to do with them later. I would rather have more than I need so I can plan out whatever arrangement I want than not enough. So uh, let's get to crocheting some very, very tiny flowers.
And again, here's the book that I've used. I will uh, probably find it on Joann's or Barnes & Noble and link it in the description. I will not take credit for any of the patterns you see. Um, this is entirely the book that I purchased and has inspired uh, what I'm doing with this project. So let's get to it. So here's where I am. And uh, let me just say the ends are absolutely what I'm having the hardest time figuring out how to deal with because there's a lot of ends for all of these, for every color change, you know, for every small piece of it. And so obviously this one, each of these tiny little white flowers, and this piece I think is gonna be gorgeous. The problem is if I do more of these, I'm just multiplying the ends. Also, this one's a little bit different. So this video might be a lot of talking until I actually get to the whole patterning and putting it together. But so this one is not actually in the book, but it is based on this. Pretty, pretty, pretty clearly based on this. So I just kind of used the way this was created as a baseline, except I did the stem entirely first and I just did smaller gaps on here. So there's a consistent theme for like even this one where it like chains four and then you loop back on itself and then you slip stitch down and then do an attachment on the outside. I essentially did that instead of the way that it does the ends here. And then I just like single crocheted, I think four into each one to kind of create the, the look of the little white flowers. And I think if we line this up, you know, against this, like, I think that's super cute. And I'm going to do a bunch of um, the leaves in different colors. I want more of these leaves in this green and then more of them in that green. I don't think, I think these greens complement each other. That's what I'm telling myself right now. Uh, Cause I'm going to hate myself if it comes out that I'm going to want all of them to be the same green. That's the debate that I'm currently having, but I don't think this white will show up against that green. So that's why I did it on this one. I'm really not sure how the colors of this are going to work out, so I'm still making flowers, so let's keep going. While I'm here, I just wanted to kind of call out something with the stem. So, you know, my stems have this really nice braided, and I can't, it doesn't specify in, like, the book, but in my opinion, the best way to get the nicest stem on this is, so these are my chains, and so one side has the nice pretty V on it, and if you flip it over, there's essentially a ridge on the back. And I've been uh, slip stitching all of my stems into this ridge on the back because I think it gives like that really nice kind of boxed shape. So anyways, if you're looking at this and wondering where you should slip stitch, that's where I did and I quite like the results. I'm also using a slightly larger hook for this leaf than I did for this one. And I actually think it looks kind of nice. It's sitting a lot flatter and I think the shape, I mean, it still came out just fine. So they'll be a little bit different. They're not that much different so i'm not about to undo this and redo it with a smaller hook because this pattern is annoying but i like this one so there's how long it takes me to make one leaf so let's make three two more so i'm constantly like laying these things out and figuring out what i want i have no idea what this video is going to end up being it's going to be me talking and moving yarn around the screen again thread but and like i like this color until i discovered this one because like Look at how gorgeous and rich that tone is, especially this one. I know the ends are like all over the place and it makes it really hard to see. But then, you know, trying to bring, it's like, hey, look, I got a light stem now. So like, I'm not saying I won't use them, but like in comparison, like this is fine, but I think this looks really pretty. So again, I don't currently have more of the blue yarn and I have a bunch of the green that I bought, but now I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with. I, st I don't hate the color and I probably will find something to do with. Also, these are relatively cheap. They're like uh, 70 cents a thing. So it's not like that's that expensive. This was $3 then. Um, and I've got plenty of the green and I will say both of these green stems used almost a full one. So I do think I'll have enough maybe to do a stem of one more of these. So I'm gonna do one more poppy in this dark green, I think, and that's gonna determine how much I really like it. And if I really, really like it, then I'm gonna make for sure one more of each of these. Um, and then I need to wait, cause again, I don't have more blue yarn, but I really like this one too. So my other thing is I'm trying to figure out how many I need to actually put all over the jacket. I'm thinking of like two concentrated, bits of flowers on like the top corners the 
the the top and lower corner of the back of the jacket and then some smaller ones on like the pockets and stuff on the front so like not an insane amount but like just a little embellishment but also I may go overboard and I've also decided I don't like I did these things I don't think I like them I don't think they really fit the vibe it's just a lot of stem me things going on so I might need to actually like make more of these so I can, you know, kind of create bigger pockets of flowers because maybe that's what it's missing. Maybe I just need more flowers. So we'll see, but I'm going to make some more of this and some more of the stem bits because I know I'll want those. Um, and I also don't, I didn't buy more black and I'm really annoyed with myself. I have a dark brown and I have a blue, but I don't have a black and I just don't think those... I think those are different enough that you're going to be able to tell. And I don't want to have too many different things on this. So the ends are everywhere and I'm absolutely losing my mind. <laughs> so really quick, another weird thing I've noticed, and there's obviously one inherent difference between these and that's length. Um, but the other thing is all three of these are like really strong and all three of these were purchased from Michaels. I'm applying the same amount of strength to all of these. All three of those are really strong. These three came as a set. This one was bought separately and uh, I literally feel like I could snap this in half and with how tight some of these like stems and stuff are, it's really concerning to be like working the stitch and feeling it literally bending in my hands. Like I don't think I should be able to bend my crochet hook like that. So um, at some point in this video, there may be a snap update. So I, Domino is just very thirsty in this video. Hi, buddy. You're so cute. So I may go back to using this one for the sole fact of I don't feel like I'm gonna break it. And I really feel like I'm gonna break this one. So I think it is official. I like this green better. It's a process. It's always a process. I don't hate this green. And I think maybe I'll just use this one to make some kind of collage, like actually from the book, because that could also be cute. Um, but I think for the purposes of this project, I'm trying not to change up too much and I do kind of want it to be cohesive and I, I went with a lot of desaturated dark colors intentionally. The lighting again feels terrible but it's fine. It's light. It's late at night. So but the fun thing that I kind of figured out for the poppies is I actually figured out how to flip them. So the pattern has you do it this way. This is what the pattern results in with this petal being in front of that one and basically essentially by just doing the petal part backwards one of these looks slightly better than the other I think this one is the one that looks slightly better but essentially by doing it backwards you can get the other puddle in front and so I think this will just allow me a little bit more opportunity as far as like the ends are everywhere like if I wanted to layer these or like put them together it looks a little bit better if they're opposite each other than if they're identical you know that just looks a little less natural to me so I don't know but I made four of them. Each one of these took 10 minutes. So that's super fun. So you want to see what 40 minutes of work looks like? Th that. That each one of these took 10 minutes. <laughs> so if these took 10 minutes, I didn't even track how long this one took. I'm pretty sure this guy took maybe 20 just because these knots are really tiny to get into. So yeah, this is definitely a lot of work going into this project. Um, so now that I have multiple of these... I think next I'm going to make more of these and more of these and uh, eventually go buy more blue so I can actually make more of those uh, and more black so I can actually make more of those. But like, honestly, I feel like I'm finally making progress. Like I have a good number, like I have a good number of things. I basically have one set of the red and if I can just kind of I think I'm just going to focus on like one thing at a time because I felt like once I got going on the little poppies it was really easy to churn them out so now I'm going to try to churn out probably this one or this one and get some more of those done so I can just keep it schmoving so here's my update um because these colors were from a set basically of colors where I don't really know what they were. I had to kind of try to find a good color match. And I think these are really close. They're not exact. You can see that they're a little bit brighter. But I'm going to work up an example with these because I actually have the numbers for what these are. So when I run out of them, if I like them, I can go find new ones. 
And if not, then I'll just buy more. Again, these are only 70 cents each, so they're not the worst expense in the world. And I can use them for things later in the future. So where we are now, I have multiple big poppies. I've got three big ones. I've got, oh, Jesus. All right, the ends are killing me. This one has a lot of ends because I was trying to use scraps. So, uh, cause apparently I hate myself a little bit. <laughs> so I've got three big poppies. I've got four little poppies. And then I made some variations on, I showed, this was the original and this is very true to pattern for what was in the book, uh, this leaf stem. And so with that, I made the standard one. And I also made a flipped one cause there is technically a right side to these. This is the right side. This is the wrong side. Not that it really is going to matter, but I made mirror images. I also made little leaves. I made ones that just have one little stem. This is not in the book. Um, this is essentially one leaf is normal and then kind of just a smaller version of the leaf interpreted with just single crochets and like two half double. So this one is like seven chains. This one was only five and then, you know, made a little bit shorter. But I think those are super cute and will give me a little bit of versatility. And then I also have one large double leafed one just because I did that one. And then I was like, what if I made it tiny? So I don't know how many of these I'll make. It's just kind of so that I can come up with like some different leaf arrangements and just have a few more small pieces. So I probably want at least a little bit more, one or two more of these, maybe. I don't entirely know. So, but those are kind of the pieces as I have it now. So I've got five leaf pieces. One, two, three, four, five, four of those and three of these. I think I just want three large poppies. I'm not, I don't know. I kind of need to start making some blue ones or some of the other ones. I'm gonna, I think, switch to making more of this monstrosity so I can get a few more of these. I think I want at least three, if not a few more of this. Um, and then I'll get on to making more of the blue ones. So I'm um, maybe halfway through the pieces that I need. I've found that I'm a lot more productive if I just stick to one thing, like I'm just gonna make large poppies and then just make a bunch of those because I don't have to keep referencing or flipping back and forth pages in the book. I just remember what I'm doing and I can kind of modify it there. So yeah, so this is the right side for this one. This is the wrong side. Again, I don't know how much it really matters. We'll see when I get to stitching it on. But anyways, um, those are the leaves. I think the leaves came out really good. I like these a lot, and I do still have plenty of green thread left for that. I have two, I have three full ones and a fourth kind of used. So, because these, these smaller ones obviously don't take nearly as much thread. I will need at least one of these, I think, so that I can do four of the small blue flowers. Um, but other than that, I think I'm I'm chugging along. So I don't I don't really know what I'm doing with this video. So, so here's a test layout of where we are. This is on the bottom of a chair because my table is still overrun with the embroidery supplies. So I'm actually thinking I'm only gonna use red, and there's a few reasons why. One. I mean, this just looks gorgeous. I think the color palette still works together. This gray works really well with the red. And this is kind of me testing laying it out. I still have one full red poppy, and then I have um, two more of the tiny ones, plenty of leaves, and one more of the big white branching flower. And I'm thinking of doing something on the front as well, so I'll probably incorporate that. At a minimum, I'll create one more poppy, because I think I can do that. Uh, because reason two, outside of the color palette, is actually my hands. This crochet, I mean, you can see my hand's pretty swollen. I have carpal tunnel, I think I've said in previous videos, but uh, these hooks are tiny, like really, really tiny. And this thread is very hard to work with. So more than normal crochet, there's a lot of pulling and a lot of tension that I don't usually have to worry about that I think is definitely taking a negative impact on my hands, unfortunately. Uh, so for my own health, and for the color scheme, I think I'm not going to do blue, at least right now. Because the thing is, I could always crochet blue things later and add them to the jacket. But I think I'm going to go with something down in the corner up here, something up there, and then something on the front side of the jacket as well. So it'll be a little understated, but also, I mean, I think that just looks absolutely gorgeous. So this is not anything on final placement. I definitely love this. I think that probably is kind of filling in that corner. And then for nice balance, I was going to put something down here. Um... I might mess around with it and show some other concept pictures depending on where we get to, but for the sake of my hands, I'm going to try to not crochet anymore. 
So I finally got this into the embroidery hoop. And I say finally because the, where I want to put this has this unfortunate problem of a seam. So I'm not sure how truly up in the corner I'm going to be able to get it with how I originally had wanted it. Um, so that's something I'm working with because I think I want to do it in an embroidery hoop just because it'll make like my life a little bit easier. So I'm going to go look at my reference pictures and see where I put it because maybe it's about getting at least one flower set and then doing the rest of them. So anyways, that's where we are. Um, I've suffered through getting denim in an embroidery hoop. Do not recommend. I think the fabric itself would be fine, but it's the seams that are absolutely a problem. So uh, let's see what I can do. And uh, just as a sidebar, part of the reason this project's taken me so long, and I'm not entirely sure what the end product that I'll have is going to be, is because my boyfriend is wonderful and bought me new yarn for Valentine's Day. And uh, I don't know, anyone who's a crocheter knows that as soon as you get new yarn, you get distracted and like start new really pretty projects. So I have uh, 10 of these now, and I have three more of these. And um, I'm really excited because they're so pretty and they're all different ombre. I mean, just look, look at how beautiful, look at how pretty these are. So these may be a video, oop, we picked up a straggler, but like, I think I'm gonna make a sweater out of them, like a little, like a little zip up cardigan. So these are just like the prettiest, cutest things on the planet and they're mindless and I love them. And they are the reason why this project may not get finished on time. So I just wanted to share because yeah, it's okay to get distracted. Um, I'll fi you finish things eventually, as long as you try to stick to it, which is what I'm going to try to do. But also, look, they're pretty. So here's just a little bit of fast forward. Uh, basically, my entire process for doing this was I started by utilizing the ends of everything. I knew they weren't going to get me all the way around all of the pieces, but the ends at least gave me a really good place to start and basically just further secured the final crochet piece because not only were they knotted at the end, they were then knotted on the other side of the fabric because they were completely secured. You can't really see it. Um, I think you'll see it eventually. There is a piece of interfacing underneath that I am stitching into that is also secured by the embroidery hoop. And basically, I was just going through and trying to catch... I started with trying to catch both loops of the outer crochet edge, but I ended up towards the end just catching the bottom loop because I think it ended up looking better. I did also start by filling in the center of the crochet pieces with stitches sewing them down and I ended up not doing that towards the end because it didn't feel necessary. So a lot of lessons learned through this but I figured I'd have at least one bit of a little voiceover explanation in this very rambly video. So here's a quick update. So I've gotten these two fully stitched on. The back is a little ugly um, because I'm again not the best with embroidery. That's why we didn't really uh, embroider these in the first place. We're stitching them on. So they look a little lumpy, but again, they were crocheted. So, I mean, crochet naturally has all these little lumps. And to some extent, I was trying to follow the pattern to stitch it in, but I also wanted these to be like really securely stitched in. I didn't want any loops or stuff. So like nothing's going to come off. I do need to figure out what's happening there. Um, so nothing's going to come off, but now I'm at a point where I want to put the poppy, the main poppy I think was originally going to go here. And then I have three of these little spaghetti monsters. And I'm trying to figure out how I want it because I do still like the, the vibe of this one reaching up into that top corner. But I kind of need this stem stitched in before I do that. So I'm just trying to figure out where to place like the stem and which one of these I should really use. So unfortunately, I think I need to take it out of this for the time being so I can figure out where exactly I need to stitch this. And essentially, I'm just going to stitch up the base of the stem because everything else should be outside of the main poppy. And then I'll stitch the poppy on and then try to see if I can move this to stitch this one on or if I'm just going to have to do it freehand. So I think I'm actually going to change it a little bit. I think these were a little too high up because, again, it was kind of hard to see where things were because of the shifting from the embroidery hoop, but I think I'm going to have it arc that way, which still I think is aesthetically going to work because it's curving with the ribs. So now that just means the poppy is going to get shifted over a little bit that way. So now I'm going to take this guy out and um, attempt to sew the stem in so that this stays where it's supposed to be, meaning I'm probably not going to put the embroidery hoop back on just so I don't lose where I placed this. I started by stitching down just the bottom part 
of the white branchy flower just so I could make sure it was exactly where I wanted it. And then I did decide to put my embroidery hoop back on and I had to go all the way over onto the sleeve. I do believe this was even a slightly larger embroidery hoop um, just to try to actually get it to be taut and work with it. And it was an absolute pain to get it on, which is why, although I don't show it, I didn't use an embroidery hoop at all for the second set of flowers. They were just towards the bottom and there were buttons and more seams and it was just going to be a nightmare. It ended up working out okay, I just had to be very careful, and I actually ended up using pins to, like, pin the crochet pieces to the fabric to make sure they stayed where I wanted them to. So that was kind of the happy medium, so if an embroidery hoop doesn't work, just know pinning it to the fabric, as long as it's a stiff fabric like this, is probably okay. I don't think this would have worked at all for a stretchy fabric, but again, you probably don't even want to embroider on top of a stretchy fabric. So, regardless... Um, piece by piece, we just put this whole thing together. The sewing was actually very relaxing. Um, it was tedious, but in a very, I don't have to think or pay attention to what I'm doing. I can just get this done kind of way. So didn't take too much time. I mean, it took time, but this was probably the easiest part of the whole thing. Oh my freaking gosh. So Caveat, uh, this isn't technically done. I have not sewn the little thread in, but I have sewn all of the little circles down, so those are done. And I do think I wanna add some defining lines right around where, cause you can't tell where the petals of the poppy are anymore. Uh, I know where they are, cause I sewed it in there, right there, right there, right there, and right there, uh, but you can't really see it. So I do wanna sew some black lines in there. And I sewed this completely down and I haven't sewn um, the inside of the poppy completely down. And I don't know if I'm going to to be completely honest. I was worried about like things catching it, but I mean, I feel like it's gonna be pretty in there. This, however, this will catch on things. And so I am going to go and sew that down completely. But, 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 I want to release it from the frame because I wanna see what this looks like. I'm, I'm so incredibly excited. And I'd much rather get started on the other one than uh, work on finishing this one quite right now. But like, look at that. Is she a little rough? I mean, maybe, but like, I think that looks so freaking cool, especially if we get like a little bit further from it. Oh my gosh, I, I'm obsessed. That looks so good. And there's gonna be another one down in the corner and it's not a lot, it's a little subtle, but like I did this. That's so cool. That's, that's always my goal with any of my projects is like to just do something fun, new, and or interesting and I think this is all of those I mean one doing this was incredible in and of itself like I'm still so obsessed with this bleach paint and I have plans to do more future videos but I mean look it's like embroidery but not because honestly I don't think thank you camera for focusing on my hands I don't think if I had embroidered this it would have really looked any better and honestly thank you train in the distance um I don't know if it would have looked any better because like kind of suck at embroidery and I don't know how well it would have held up not that I know how well this is gonna hold up you know it's it's just really hard but like that looks so cool man I mm, yay and now I get to do it all again woo so I wanted to experiment and see what laying some stuff out on the front might look like and honestly um I kind of think I want to duplicate this over here and kind of create a dual moment which would be really cool um, and I think I kind of want to wait on this and see if I do in the future want to do blue flowers because honestly, I'm a big fan of like the big thing on the back of something. I don't need it to be super busy in the front. Um, plus if I do something on the front, I feel like I might do something, want to do something with the sleeves and I haven't done that yet. They're just picking up all sorts of domino hair and thread fuzzies. So I'm not entirely sure on the front. This is kind of what I'm thinking right now, though, just with the pieces I have. I literally just have this three leaf. I have two of these red poppies. I have this tiny leaf, big leaf. I have another set of two leaves. So here's the other little two pieces that I have. One more big poppy and one more white strandy thing. As far as what I'm creating right now, because I'm not making any more, at least this week, to give my hands a break. So with that, though, I did actually finish the back. So... Oh, look, it's, I know, it's, it feels so small. It doesn't feel like a big grand reveal, but honestly, I think this just looks so freaking incredible because it's so simple, 
but I love it so much because this is super bright. I was really worried that the flowers were gonna like make it too light and I was gonna have to add some extra bleach paint to this. But honestly, I think because the flowers are a little bit more minimalist and dyed down, that it really brings it together well. So I mean, there's plenty of room at the top of the shoulders if I wanted to do some more flowers. And honestly, that might be what I do. I think, you know, a red poppy on the upper shoulder could be cool and kind of try to bring it around more. But I'm gonna call this version two of that this jacket and call that good enough for this video. So. Um, this is what I have and I'll model it for some outro pictures, but genuinely, if you made it to this point in the video, uh, thank you so much. I know this one is a lot of rambles and a lot of chaos and back and forth, uh, just because this thread is really tiny and kind of hard to work with. And I know I thought about putting some defining lines in the poppies and honestly, I don't think I'm going to, I don't want to make them busy. I just kind of like the look as they are. So genuinely, if you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much. You might as well give me a like for telling YouTube that you want to see some more of my rambles. If you do, if not, that's okay. Uh, have a lovely day and move on and enjoy whatever other content you choose to watch. And thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.